this computer. All righty. Well, we are uh, here with Tribe Talk with the professor. I'm Crystal Tate, and I have with me Corey Murphy. She is my partner in crime and everything. Um, and the way that we set up these sessions is we allow for up to 16 minutes. They are recorded, and then they are put in actually a playlist in YouTube, but that is available on the Facebook page. So you guys can go and access those recordings at any point in time. Um, so we chit chat for about 15 or 20 minutes in regards to our topic. And then we do leave the rest of the time open for Q&A for anybody um, that has questions on what we're talking about or anything else. We are here to support you. So this month and next month, we're talking about career search and exploration and then that how that leads into the next components of all of this. And so we're really going to um, break out how we focus on career search and exploration with students when we're working with them. So you can use that as a tool in terms of conversation with your student um, or if you're in that boat of they just don't listen to me because I'm the parent, then you know that you can always reach out to us for support. But really, kind of this big picture of career exploration is helping them figure out what are their interests, what are their values, what are their skills and their personality. And it's really taking that and trying to match that with some ideas for potential career options. And so we're really trying to give them this big picture, right, of understanding and taking into just their internal thought process how they can take what their aptitudes are and relate that to something they may want to do in the future. So of course, though, they do always get hit with, you know, these really hard questions early on. And I always tell everybody when I meet with them, I don't expect your kid to know the answer to what they want to do with the rest of their life. Um, and so when they are getting into high school graduation and there's a lot of this pressure around it, our goal is always to try to reduce that down and just making them start to think critically, like I was saying about about how their interest in all of these different areas can match up with what they could do in their future. So there is um, the typical career planning model. And the reality is this is also just kind of like the um, kind of the career search model as well. Like it just kind of everything funnels from one thing to another. So when they're small, right? Like I have a five-year-old. And so if you asked her what she wanted to do when she grew up, she'd probably say she wanted to be Elsa. Um, or some days it's that I've been watching superhero movies, mommy. And so like this morning she said, I want to, wouldn't it be really cool if we could fly? And I'm like, yes, honey, of course it would. Um, so it's the, you know, what do you want to be becomes these big ideas and, you know, shooting for the stars, which works while they're young, but then we have to start to transition, but then the transition becomes more stressful of now it's the, what do you want to do when you grow up be, feels more serious and has like this greater weight and expectation for an answer, which I know as those well-meaning adults doesn't always mean that it's intended that way, but that's definitely how it comes across to the teenage brain. Um, I can tell you from the 10 years that I've been doing this. And so um, that sense of anxiety that starts to really occur and then you start to experience in your household is also the thing yet again that we're trying to um, get out of that vicious cycle. So really, where do you want to go to college? What are you going to major in? What are you going to do after college starts to get into those heated conversations and debates? And I can tell you, like, I met with a family um, today and it was totally, I mean, mom, mom and dad were both just like, we have no freaking idea. <laughs> and, and they were very honest about like, that is why we're having this conversation now is because we don't know how to guide in this. And we know that his aptitude is in reading and he really likes reading. So he was thinking about English, but he doesn't really know what that means. And so we just started talking through some of those components also to just start to have them feel that it doesn't have to have all of this pressure around it. 
Now, Corey created this wonderful graphic for us in terms of looking at this, and she has been through this personally oh, herself. She has two um, kiddos um, that are older now and one that is at University of Nevada, Reno, and has had to work through this with her own then high school students that are now doing their own semi-adulting thing, right? Um, <laughs> but it's part of if you're a freshman if you're a sophomore if you're a junior if you're a senior and you haven't started this yet right this process of what we're talking about um typically people do it this way we call it the upside down approach where the college search is where people think they have to start to find schools that they're interested in and then they try to find things that they want to study there and then they're trying to find kind of some careers that maybe that relates to and then they think about what they're strong at and does this really work? And the answer is no, none of this really works. So whenever we flip that modality and we say we want to start right side up, that is why we start with number one is always the career search, right? Focusing on what their aptitudes are and then explaining to them how that relates to different majors then doing a college search to determine what those potential options could be so we have stuff to explore and then how can you marry that into this next step of talking to people within these different paths to see if you really even vibe with it right they have more of a connection point to it when you do it in that fashion um so Today, we're going to focus on the first two in a little bit more depth and kind of explaining how I work with students in this context. And then next month, we're going to do this more in the aspect of college search and exploring careers. And this whole concept is what we call student positioning. So it's really taking all of these things that make up our kid and matching it with what they're looking for in a school. Um, and we always say, of course, making sure that we're making it financially affordable at the same time. But this is really just taking it more from that interest standpoint today because we don't want to overwhelm your brain with all of the stuff that we work through in this process all at one time. So the when we talk about career and aptitude testing, really the one that we use has four components, interests, right? How much they, they like certain activities over others, skills, and what are they good at and what comes naturally and value, what do they, what is important to them, you know, making money or um, what do they get really passionate or mad about? And then personality is how they tackle projects and interact with others. So when you put all of that into perspective, um, there are tons of different assessments that you can do out there. And I don't think that there's any right or wrong in them, right? Like people will be like, oh, well, I did this one at this high school, but then it said that I need, I should be like a barber. And I didn't understand what that meant. And I'm like, part of this is also explaining what happened in your career search, right? Like how do we determine with the way that you answer these things and these different components, what then makes a next step in terms of why would you want to look at engineering or why does it seem like communications may be more your bucket or what facet does your student start to fall into? Um, because we can see that when we're looking at the results of a career search. And this is something that Corey has also been working on for many years with a lot of my students as well. Um, and so the focus to explore is the, the assessment that we use with all of our clients. And it marries this concept called Holland Codes as well as Myers-Briggs in terms of the personality component. So we get more of a holistic viewpoint. And that is then what we start to take in terms of building these next steps. Corey, is there anything you want to throw in on that? Because I know that you have more of that aptitude around the Holland Codes and the career search. Um, just that maybe this is not a one-time thing, but students have lifetime access to this. And so many years ago, I was up babysitting when Crystal would work at our middle schoolers with her little, and we had the middle schoolers in, in this, my daughter and, and her older daughter. And, and it's a conversation that continues through high school, through college, 
even early into their career planning. Um, my oldest is 20, 20, uh, 20 and uh, we, we still talk about these things while he's navigating his way um, to start, start off his career path. Great. Yeah, great point. And that's part of kind of what I was trying to get at earlier is it doesn't matter whether you're a freshman or a senior or post that, you always have an opportunity to work with your student on this component for them to start to feel clarity or find different ways for them to engage and, and explore. So it's always a benefit to come back to it for sure. And there's a lot of wisdom in this, sorry, to, but I should have said, there's results, but there's also the wisdom that goes with it. Right, yeah, so you can't just take the results. Is it prompts students through a deeper dive? Yeah. Right, yeah, you can't just take the results and then look at the list and say, oh, well, it said I should be this, and then be like, yeah, that that's not the end all be all. It, you have to interpret that data and add that level of understanding behind it for sure, um, which I feel like is one of the primary struggles. And yet again, where that conversation is great to come in to make sure that there is a better understanding of all of this. But then, of course, we have to take it to that next step and saying our goal is to then identify what kind of majors that we are looking at and I know that there's a lot of verbiage on here but this is really just like the how we walk through a student through this process so once we figure out those strengths and aptitudes like I was saying then I work with a student and I say okay well let's look at some colleges based on what I'm seeing and based on the conversations that we've had to start to gauge your level of interest in these options right like if you study economics these are the things that you're going to have to take classes on for the next four years. What's your level of interest? Keep it simple. On a scale of one to 10, I like it a four. I like it an eight. And this is why. The more input you can give me, then the better I can help you in terms of figuring out where we're going with this. Um, and it does take it from kind of this obscure idea of like thinking I have to come up with a career when they don't understand what the day in the life of an economist is right like that's very obscure so when you take it more from the they're used to picking classes they understand what they have to take in study do they feel like they're going to survive does that give them a spark and make them excited um or is it like no crystal there's no way you could get me to go do public speaking or whatever right you and you find a lot of interesting things about kids to make um, those connections. And I think that that's one of the funnest things about working with them. Um, so really, when um, they start to give us that feedback as well, it helps us to also find schools that are that better fit. So it all leads into this component of student positioning, right, of what I'm saying, when we start to figure some of these things out, then we can kind of wrap everything else around it and having those conversations to develop, okay, so what, what kind of schools are going to be this next best option, which is why it funnels down this way for us. And so that's why we're going to talk more in depth about kind of the college search process and how we can also use different avenues to explore careers because we use a lot of resources within this and this is where we focus a lot of time with students and making sure that they feel solid and understanding that they have options to pick from and how can you have these conversations with people um, and not have it feel uh, like you have no idea what you're doing, <laughs> right? Because they are 16 or 17 years old. And sometimes having these conversations and doing this work is hard. And so it is pushing them outside of their comfort zone, um, and making them look a little deeper. So, um, I, I encourage you put, uh, questions. If you have any in the chat box for us, we are more than happy to answer anything that you have. Um, and then our next tribe talk is on 3 8 at 5 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time. And like I said, we're going to be going into the college search and career aspect. Um, if you have not yet joined our Facebook group for tribe, then you can always hit um, within your um, college planning tribe 
in the top section is live Q&A with us on Zoom. And in there is the link to say, hey, um, I haven't done this yet, so we're going to click that <laughs> um, and make that happen. And we're um, our goal is to share content in terms of the next topics that we have coming up and any other tidbits that we do encounter along the way um, as well. Uh, Jennifer, no, I have not heard of Zello that um, that that high that seems a lot like focus too. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Just so folk in. I've heard, um, I've been on a lot of webinars for different um, companies and organizations, and I've also heard that actually a lot of the high schoolers have been, the high schools have been changing up a lot of the systems and stuff that they've been using. Um, but as a general foundation, most of the high schools are going to have some form of a Holland Code focused career search. Um, th and that's why I said there is no right or wrong and I think Corey said this the best, it's more just about the wisdom that comes behind it. Don't just expect them to do a career search and for stuff to come out of it in a positive fashion. They need to have follow-up conversation about the depth of what they need to be doing as a next step. And I think that that is really um, what and, needs to happen. And the other part about it is follow-up conversations in their college planning but also when they stumble, when they lose confidence, and I speak with experience of my oldest, when he's doubting himself, we come back to his assessment and talk about some of those, those things. So it, it lives on past just college planning and, and it gives him confidence to go, oh yeah, okay, I'm on the right path or, oh, I eliminated this years ago and here's why. So. Right. And Jennifer, how many sessions do we spend with a student um, on this? Uh, honestly, it's as many as we need to. Um, so I've had some really tough cookies to crack um, where we have had to work on this continuously. Um, and like Corey said, it's one of those where you always have the right to come back to it. Our focus too also is a lifetime membership for a client. So you can always use it um, even after you've stopped working with us. But part of that is whenever I meet with a family for an initial consultation, right, we're walking through and getting to know each other and finding out these things. And then I'm going to keep doing that with the kiddo until we start getting some results of where we're going and we feel solid with our list of schools in relationship to all of these things that we've been talking about. Um, so it really, I don't limit or set an expectation of this is how long it's going to take, um, other than the general goal of saying if, if we're juniors, we would like to have an, uh, you know, stuff kind of figured out for application time so that then we're walking into applications, um, with a good foundation. Um, so. And, some and sometimes, you know, it's not ideal, but we'll do all of this with a student and they just don't, don't want to commit to something. They're like, I love English, like your example. Well, in the focus too, I love that we can put, what if I major in English and here's all the jobs and then you can rank them by salary. Um, you can, and that really with a student who is, is stuck because they're afraid um, of making a wrong choice or just making a choice that really gets them over to the hump. They're like, I, I am just English. Which is easy. I love it. Great. Let's pursue your passion. Let's keep doing what you're good at. Here's all the things that you could do with that. And they, their eyes open. They, they get really excited. Um, cause they just don't know at this, at this point. Totally. It's fun. Um, and so what month of junior year should we start in case it takes many sessions? Um, honestly, the answer is now for a junior, um, the answer is now, um, because we've got a little bit of runway between now and summer when we're working on stuff. Um, my, my ideal is always, you know, if we have younger students, especially that we want to, uh, start at the beginning of junior year. So usually sometime over the summer before they are actually officially in junior year is the best time because they're going to have more opportunity. Um, the longer we wait, it just means they're going to have more stuff to do in a shorter period of time. 
right? And depending on how forthcoming they are or how things are working in terms of them committing to actually getting stuff done, right? Like it all does play in more time we have sometimes um, the less stressful. It's the easiest way I have to put it. Yeah. Good question. Um, and I, I just realized too um, that, so, and within the, within the community, right? So if you log into your, um, into the free community where you access the tribe, your tribe membership, um, and there is also a, um, the services section. So there is always an opportunity to schedule that consultation in terms of those next steps so that then we can also make sure that we're having that conversation. uh jennifer the month they start to use the info is like may of junior year what do you mean by the info give me some clarity there i i was just meaning like if that um when you're talking about you know starting ideally in the summer in case there's a bunch of sessions so that they're ready and it's not crunched i'm wondering what the other end of that of that run is right like oh, when is, when is it when does the timeline end <laughs> yeah. when is the cutoff yeah um, cut off. yes great question so typically um i stop there's only so much that i can do for seniors like once they once they hit summer leading into senior year um and so if my schedule is full then i can always meet with people for one-on-one -on -one sessions which is the 150 dollars for one-off sessions um, and we can always try to work through as much as we can. And I have a lot of people that'll take advantage of that as a senior, um, but th that isn't as comprehensive, right? We're just kind of trying to do what we can at that point. Um, so definitely that's usually, that's my cutoff kind of, I, I stop kind of working our full system in terms of everything once they are done, like once because ends. we have because we have kids working on applications yes. August sir exactly that, that early yeah so this is the effort of junior year yes you are correct 100 percent and Jennifer I don't remember what graduation year your student is can you remind me 2025 she's only a freshman this okay year. yeah perfect so we have plenty of time I just I'm one of those people that needs to kind of know what the future looks like so I'm not like surprised when I get there right because the worst case scenario is you get there and you're like oh if you just done this a month ago and you're like well if I only knew about it yeah. two months ago then I could have done it a month ago <laughs> right exactly. I'm just trying to inform myself now about what that looks like and your um, webinars and things have been really helpful as far as laying that out and give me a sense of what the roadmap is basically Great. So I know where to slot this one in. Super glad to hear it. Yes. So mark your calendar for June of end of sophomore year. <laughs> <Right>. Will do. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, do you have any other uh, questions for us, Jennifer? Not that I can think of right now. I'm usually not short on questions, but um, that that's I'm, I'm we're obviously at the way beginning, so. I'm just trying to get my- It comes fast. Out. I can speak from experience. I That's what I'm feeling like too, which is exactly why I'm trying to, uh, to get it uh, ahead of me. It feels like it comes a little less fast when you have a little bit more time to process the information, right? Like oh. if I start digesting it now, it's going to feel a little bit less like a whirlwind than it would if I started to digest it, um, you know, at this point in her junior year, if I was already in- in uh, February of her junior year, it would feel a little overwhelming, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. 